to this computer just in case. Double record. All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome back from holiday. Everybody that was gone, this is our first Dev All Hands of the new year. Um, I think a lot of people are out, but we will uh, go ahead and get going. Um, doo -doo -doo. Uh, if you can add your name to the attendees list at the top of the notes, I'll just repaste that in chat in case anybody missed it. And uh, Alan's up first. He's not here. Um, a bunch of stuff with IPFS. Take a look at the notes. Um, there's something he is blocked on with control signals. Um, I can probably help try to take a look at that. He's asking for help, so I will try to take a look at that this week. Uh, next up, Vashko. Hey all. Um, so in the last times I uh, finished the IPNS spec, uh, Stephen uh, reviewed it and uh, I fixed all, all the review stuff and it is uh, merged. So now we have finally the IPNS spec ready. Then uh, uh, Alan did uh, uh, this week, uh, last week, the IPNS and DHT interop reviews, and I solved everything as well. Uh, in the and then in the LIP2P side, I uh, have the PR for the LIP2P demon client. It is almost ready. I just need to make a fine a final polishment, and then I will ask a review to Jacob to finish that. And then uh, I helped with a lot of PRs and reviews for updating the dependencies and the, with the problem of the Stack Overflow for the new release of GSIPFS. So for this week, I, I need to do some preparation for the LIP2P team week that will be next week in Porto. And uh, then I have uh, an issue with the uh, KDHT that Alan uh, found out and uh, it basically we don't have in JS land the limits for the number of peers we have connected as there is in uh, Goland and I will fix this hopefully this week and uh, then I will also uh, create a PR with the first set of interrupt tests for lip 2 p as we now have the mm -hmm. daemon client and both uh, daemons for JS and Go. That's everything for me. Any questions? I think no. I have a, I have a question. Um, so on the discovery limits, are we is the problem the memory consumption of having multiple open connections? Um, is that the limit that we want to impose, or is it the limit? So uh, according to to the change log in Go, yes, it's because of the memory limits, and uh, they they set uh, uh, a low a low watermark and a high watermark. And uh, in the change log, they have that those values should be analyzed afterwards in order to check if they are good or not. But I think they didn't have uh, further analysis. So for now, I think we, we should go as they have. And after that, we probably should uh, get uh, some time to check if they're at the best values or not. Got it. So go IPFS. Uh, and I think just IPFS or just if your is as well. Uh, it was implemented by Pedro. It's on the connection manager. It just like comes yeah. disabled by default. And so it should be just like you having like just enabling it. The thing yeah. with the connection manager is like when you turn it on, it starts like straight tracking all the traffic, which like the performance team already has identified as like a, a huge um, like time waster. Uh, so like definitely check into that module. The other thing is like the way that Go IPFS does the connection closing is very naive. It's like, oh, I have nine, 900 connections. Like it seems that a hundred have to go now. <laughs> I was just like, you can yeah. shoot. Uh, and so like, if there is a way for, uh, um, well, I understand that right now it's all about shipping and like, then like we can do this as future work for the next version. But like, it would be very interesting, like in the Kademlia DHT, to keep connections to multiple parts of the tree. So that like when you are searching for a new key, you like, like you don't uh, like slide yourself to like one side of the tree and then like every time you have to go to the other city, you have to like establish a bunch of connections again. It would be good to have like a, a very well distributed finger table. Um, so it's yeah. like a reverse professor. Yeah, I totally agree. I can at least create an issue to track that. Awesome, awesome. And, and again, I like check the connection manager. It should be just like switching a flag, 
but like beware that like the connection manager will also try to measure all the traffic that goes through every single connection open and that probably should be disabled for for this use case okay yeah i will have a look thanks no problem oh no the question for vashko next up is me all right uh last week uh finished resolving a stack overflow issue we were having in the jsi pfs test uh which was being caused by a lot of uh, synchronous code being called an async code uh, so we need to keep an eye out for that i do have an outstanding um pr in bit swap uh that should be good to go um if volker you could take a look at that this week that would be helpful we'd like to get that into the 0.34 release for jsi pfs um, caught up on PRs over the holiday. Um, last week also met with uh, Mateo, uh, Vashko, Allen, and Hugo to go over the switch multi-stream Mplex um, coordination. So we created a uh, presentation for that to try to help with documentation. Uh, but we also talked a lot about Mplex performance and how we can, we can uh, make that better over time. So we'll be looking at um, that. Uh, this week, going to finish prepping for LibP2P Team Week next week. Uh, most of the lib not sure if Vashko and I will be on this call next week. Um, we'll try to make it if we can, but just FYI, um, that's where we will be. And then also going to finish up the LibP2P crypto interface work for correcting uh, key export so we can get that into LibP2P Keychain to block the uh, unblock the key types work. Um, and then I'll finish up the initial PR work for the JS LibP2P daemon. Any questions for me? Um, I have one suggestion and so and one question. So I, I'll start with the question first. Uh, on the Mplex, has any work towards converting or creating a version of Mplex with the same generator has been done so far? Or no, no, that work hasn't been done yet. Got it. Okay, so just have that in mind when like optimizing Mplex, like you probably will then need to do it for the new version. Uh, the suggestion is given that like you will be like together doing a lot of like week peer peer team week things like planning, like thinking what are the priorities, etc. Like this week is a very good uh, a time to ping your primary users, uh, and these are users that like already talked with you in the past. Uh, that's already publicly committed to use just peer to peer uh, or even users of like that you can see on dependence on the github repo um, uh, because like then you can ask them for a lot of feedback a lot of inputs of like things that are important for them for the discussions next week so consider opening an issue tagging people through github like it's a, a way to welcome people to like just post their feedback uh, if you have open relationships through email also use that or rc that's also fine but, but definitely take that, take that moment for them to be able to give you some, some feedback so that you can have more informed discussions next week. Yeah, that's a great idea. I'll create that issue today. Thanks. No problem. All right. No other questions for me. Next up is Hugo. Hi, guys. So last week, I was still a couple of days of holidays and a lot of catching up and with emails and pull requests and stuff. Um, also spent uh, some time building up some pull requests. Some of them were kind of easy, others not so much. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's going, it's going, it's going up. Hopefully uh, all the bundle size reduction will be on um, the top level repos. Uh, this uh, uh, by the end of the week. Also met with um, the near farm guys about the um, Mplex and Switch. Uh, and for the next week, I'll be continue building up the pull requests for the bundle size. I'll add the uh, bundle size command to Azure um, and also pull request some some repos to, to use that pull request uh, and finish the error codes proposal and also probably some of the ci stuff i will try to update some stuff and let's see if we can make a decision about that it's been a long time in the works any questions Awesome. Alex, 
go. Uh, Mateo is out. Um, looks like he's looking at Mplex issues this week. Uh, next up, Alexi. He's also out. Yep, working on Rendezvous server for IPFS browser tests. Uh, Volker. So, um, yeah, so I was also on a holiday, so this is my first day because I spent like four full days on getting my lap new laptop encrypted properly. <laughs> so this works now. Um, but yeah, so I will write a blog post so everyone who is on Debian will, and wants to have an encrypted boot partition with secure boot, it will be easy then. Um, yeah. Uh, and hopefully I will get some patches upstream into Debian because I needed to f f fix a few things. Um, all right, so I'm not blocked and I'm still catching up and yeah, I will probably be still fine tuning my s system because I take the time to like, not move every, all my configs over but just incrementally so I get rid of the old craft. But then I will go back to actual work and do more on the IPL, the API stuff. Um, what I've done before the holidays was that I got it working the new API with e Unix FS, and now the only thing left is getting it really work with JS um, IPFS, which should hopefully be easy. And that's all. Questions for Volker? Aside from how many times his computer was encrypted? I'm going to take each bounce of the hands to mean multiples of 10. <laughs> it would be pretty funny if you leave your computer unlocked right now <laughs> and someone hacks you. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up, Ron. Yeah, so Lexi and I, um, yeah, we spent time, uh, so we had to do um, a lot of fixing on the integration. So there were several tests that we've written locally that weren't actually being um, shown in the dashboard, so we did work on around the go and some of the new browser the new browser um, tests in order so that the remote runner would actually you know get that data into the dashboard. So we did that. Then we also updated the dashboard, so there's a new look to it, and it's a lot more scalable now. So as you're adding more tests, these points will just start appearing on the dashboard. Um, so if you go there now, you'll see you'll see many more tests. Um, then worked on more browser tests, so we have. Um, several local tests running now, um, and then I'm not sure what else I have, but yeah, um, so the rest of this week is more browser tests, so I'm going to work on the peer-to-peer -peer testing and get that in the dashboard, um, and then there's a couple Go tests that we're going to add as well, and there's actually, I mean, there, if you looked at the matrix, there's, there's lots of tests to be added, so uh, as I have time, I'll just keep adding to those, so um, yeah, I think that's about it. Wait, any questions for Ron? All right, next up, Zane. Welcome back. Hey. Yeah, I know. Long time. I <laughs> see. <laughs> Fell into a hole of work doing every stuff. Uh, now I have free time again. Uh, so I'm looking to jump back on some issues. So if there's IPLD stuff or IPFS things, or even with P2P things, I'm happy to jump on those things. So I can take a look at the waffle board, but if there's things that are like, yeah, let's do it. David. Welcome back. Uh, thank you for, for joining us again. Uh, if there, like, so there's like one thing that jumps to my head like very quickly when you, when you volunteer like that, which is this issue on the SAP Um It is an issue that like touches pretty much like the whole code base. And it's something that like, We'll receive appreciation from everyone that contributes to the project. Uh, it's the the tr transition to a sync generators. So there's a lot of modules to be uh, migrated from callbacks and promises to the sync generators, uh, and so this is like typically like one of those types of tasks that gives people like a very good breath of like exploring other parts of the code base because you will be like interacting with multiple modules. Um, if if you have the time, uh, but 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 yeah, like I'm sure there's other stuff. Uh, this is just like a proposal, it's just a, a suggestion. Okay, sure, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, uh, Volker. Uh, Volker. I just want to add in regards of IPLD. So as there weren't any real external contributors, 
I could just go ahead and break things. So just, um, there are lots of open issues. So basically, if you want to look into IPLD, it's probably best to catch up with me on IRC because like, there's, so there's basically two issues on the formats and on the main repo about a new API. And there a review from you would be great. Um, and then basically all these issues that are currently open kind of get closed once the new API, uh, API, API is there. So it's kind of like, it's probably hard for you to jump in now, but I hopefully will finish it within the next two weeks, hopefully. And then uh, we did, did, did update everything and then there will be more work. But currently it's just like, yeah, uh, would be probably confusing for you just to, yeah. Okay. I'll be like, okay, Volker is like, <laughs> Fixing things. He's holding things with both hands and just yeah. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks, yeah, guys. Then, uh, oh, go ahead. If you also, I also have some stuff for lib P2P um, at various levels of difficulty, depending on um, what time you have there. But I think the async iterators and IPL do you work would be great too. All right, cool. All right, uh, anybody else want to go? Portia, Lytle? I guess I can uh, ask why I'm here. If anyone is using IPFS Companion, you can try the latest beta. <laughs> and what's interesting there is that uh, there is a window IPFS enable method which is like a new way of getting an instance of IPFS API. Uh, so that's, that sort of landed in the uh, beta channel and I hope to ship it to stable by the end of the week. And the idea is to take this quarter to transition from exposing all commands on directly on the window IPFS object uh, to transition to uh, having only this window IPFS enable method and only and make it uh, lazily loaded so the payload that is injected on pages is very little and there is no like communication established unless uh, application like the page explicitly uh, requests ipfs and that also gives a, a like a control for the web developer to decide when the user will see uh, access prompt for granting access uh, to your log, note that is uh, behind IPFS companion. Uh, so that's just like, uh, if anyone's interested in uh, looking how it could work. Uh, I also added small experiment to, uh, that you can opt in for uh, getting this uh, experiment Alan created some time ago, uh, IPFS X. So instead of old API, uh, you can like add one flag and you will get this new prototype this is like a thin abstraction uh, that returns more modern API. So sort of like a thing you can play with and uh, provide some feedback uh, on the issue. I linked an issue also. So if anyone is interested, it's there. Awesome. It was great. Hey, yeah. This is Terry. My camera doesn't think it exists today, but can you guys hear me okay? Yep. Very clear. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Awesome. So just really quickly, I wanted to mention on this call, since I know we have lots of IPFS aficionados here, that the Proto School site is going to be launched next week. If anyone is interested in taking a look at Proto School, which is live at proto.school, that's a like community education site for those who haven't seen it yet. So interactive tutorials that are there. We can add more as we go. So I'm very open to ideas for new tutorials, whether you yourself have time to build them or just want to submit the idea. Either way, it's great. And if any of you are interested in mentoring in your local community, there's an opportunity to set up local chapters and it would be great to have a few more of those before the launch next week. So go to proto.school. Um, follow the instructions there and let me know if you see a flaw in the instructions or something that's unclear about how you would go about setting up a chapter, but feel free to jump in there or ping me individually. I'm Terry on Slack or Terry at protocol.ai if anybody has questions. Thanks. Awesome. Hi, hey, Terry. Uh, Aaron has a hand. Hi, everyone. My, account, my uh, video is also 
not digging the new year right yet. So, um, but it's my new year's resolution to be attending more of these, these stand-ups and meetings. So just wanted to introduce myself, I guess, reintroduce myself to some people. Um, I, I run the infra team. So if you have infra concerns that, uh, you know, through the stand-up you want to surface and let me know, uh, give me a heads up or have any questions, I will either attend these or be sure to watch the, the meetings if I have a scheduling conflict. So just trying to get a bit more plugged in. Um, yeah. Yay. Yay for Infra. Super excited about that. It's great. Uh, I think we've got a few minutes left. Uh, does anybody else need to talk about anything? Want to talk about anything? Have any questions? Just going to say out loud that I'm I'm getting a kick out of like just like going through the list of people that like use uh, just like peer to peer as a dependency. There's like a lot of cool projects that I never heard about. That I think to get up, I I can I can learn about them. Uh, so I really recommend like just checking the dependence, both for just like IPLV, just like peer to peer, and just IPFS. Thanks to the powers of GitHub and and <laughs> and open source code bases, we actually. So we can tell like who is using things that we are building and learn with it. Some good network stocking. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. I think that is it. Thanks, everybody. And we will see you all next week. Bye. 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 Have a good week. Bye. -bye.